Arishtasura assumed the form of a great bull with a gigantic body and huge horns, digging up the earth with his hooves. Arishtasura lifted his tail with reddened eyes and pointed horns. He came charging towards Krishna. Krishna immediately caught his horns and tossed him away. Although the demon was perspiring and appeared very tired, he took courage and charged Krishna with great force and anger. Krishna again caught his horns and immediately threw him to the ground. Breaking his horns, Krishna began to kick his body. Arishtasura rolled over and began to move his legs violently. Bleeding profusely, passing urine and stool, eyes staring from their sockets, Arishtasura passed to the kingdom of death. Demon Arishtasura represents pride arising from indulging in false religions invented by cheaters, which causes neglect of bhakti. One should be very careful in choosing and practicing religion. Once in the forest of Chitrakut, the divine couple Ram and Sita wandered in the groves and rested on the bank of a river. Rama fell asleep on Sita's lap. At that time, a crow flew close by and pecked at Mother Sita's breast. It was Indra's son, Jayanta, who came in the form of this crow. Mother Sita tried to ward off the crow without disturbing Ram's sleep. She tolerated the pain until it profusely oozed out of her body. Rama soon woke up from his slumber and saw Sita's discomfort caused by Kakasura. Raged with anger, he wished to punish the crow which stood in the vicinity with blood stained in his beak and claws. Rama chose a blade of grass and revoked it at the evil demon. This powerful dot chased the crow high and low, making him run hither and thither for his dear life. None in the three worlds, including his own father, celestial beings or the transcendental sages could protect the crow against this powerful Rama's arrow. The crow returned back to Lord Ramachandra for protection. Abuse of women is never an acceptable behavior for one hoping to make spiritual advancements and please the, su the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna. Krishna and Balaram, along with their cowherd friends, entered the forest of Talavan, guarded by demon Denukasura in the form of an ass. Balaram began to yank the trees with his mighty arms, exhibiting the strength of an elephant. The demon Denukasura came charging towards them, shaking the whole field like an earthquake. He then attacked Balaram by kicking his chest with his hind legs. Balaram stayed calm. Again and again, the beast started kicking more vehemently out of great anger. 
Balaram immediately caught hold of the legs of Dhenukasura, wheeled him around and threw him into the treetop. Dhenukasura lo lost his dear life. The ass demon is a representation of gross materialistic intelligence and ignorance of spiritual knowledge. By acquiring spiritual knowledge, one can dispel the darkness born out of ignorance. Maricha, Tataka's ferocious son, assumed the form of a beautiful golden deer and began to graze near Rama's cottage in Panchavati. Sita was attracted towards the golden deer. She requested Lord Rama to get the golden deer for her. Although she was warned that the golden deer may be a demon in disguise, she insisted to get the deer. Maricha continued to distract Lord Rama deeper and deeper into the intense forest. He jumped up in fear and bounded away between the trees. Rama realized that the deer is not real and aimed an arrow at him. The arrow hit the deer and Maricha was exposed. Maricha met his death in the hands of Lord Ramachandra. Maya is very strong and one can fall a victim for Maya at any moment. The only means of protection from the attack of Maya is to be fully Krishna conscious. Krishna consciousness cannot be checked in any circumstance. Vivida, the gorilla, great friend of Vaumasura, was as powerful as 10,000 elephants. With his powerful hands, he would disturb the sea, causing the neighborhood cities and villages to overflow. He would smash the beautiful gardens and orchards of the saintly sages. He would pass urine and stool on their sacrificial arena. He would uproot big mountains and tear it to pieces. One day, Dvivida entered Raivataka mountain where Lord Balaram was enjoying with his intimates. When Dvivida intervened and disturbed, the powerful Lord Balaram became very angry. Balaram picked up a huge stone and threw it at Dvivida. He picked up his club and attacked Dvivida. Dvivida escaped. Then Lord Balaram with his fist strikes the collarbone of the gorilla. Dvivida vomited blood and fell unconscious upon the ground. Dvivida is a good example for bad association. We must cultivate good association by engaging with and serving the devotees. Kalia, the black serpent, lived within river Yamuna. Due to Kalia's poison, the whole area was so contaminated. Even if a bird happens to pass over the spot, he would immediately fall down in the water and die. The trees and grass near the bank of Yamuna had all dried up. Krishna climbed up a big Kadamba tree and jumped into the poisonous lake. Kalia felt great anger within his heart. He grabbed Krishna and tied him up with his mighty coils. Krishna easily freed himself and jumped up onto the Kalia's hood. 
Krishna then danced gracefully, jumping from one hood of Kalya onto another. The Lord subdued the demon simply by dancing on his head. Krishna drove away Kalya from river Yamuna. Serpent Kalya with his numerous hoods symbolizes the numerous desires we have. When one desire gets fulfilled, another arises like the new hood of Kalya. When desire is satisfied, it gives birth to greed. When it is not satisfied, it gives rise to anger. The demon Bakasura assumed the form of a huge duck as big as a hill. The beast Bakasura seemed as strong as a thunderbolt. Bakasura is the younger brother of evil Agasura. Baka attacked Krishna with his sharp beaks and swallowed him. But the glow of Krishna's body was so hot that the demon spit Krishna out. Baka tried to pinch Krishna between his beaks, but Krishna got away quickly. Krishna grabbed the two beaks of the duck and pulled them apart as a child splits a blade of grass. Bakasura was finished. Bakasura is a, rep is a representation of cunning duplicity, deceptiveness and false type of behavior. In a sense, each of us are Bakasura. We all have a good version and a original defective version of us. Vajendra, the king of elephants, lived on the valley of Trikuta mountain. Ages ago, Gajendra and his female companions wandered the lake, overrunning all sorts of plants, creepers, thickets and trees in their path. The weight of Gajendra's body made Trikuta mountain tremble. As Gajendra walked, he perspired his mouth dripping with liquor and his eyes clouded with intoxication. As he was frolicking with his companions, Yuhu, the chief among the crocodiles in the lake, caught hold of Gajendra's leg. Gajendra, Gajendra struggled for thousands of years to free himself. Day by day, he was growing weaker. In his previous birth, Gajendra was King Indradyumna and he learned a prayer to the Supreme Lord. Fortunately, he remembered it and began to chant. Nayam Vedasvamatmanam Yachatyaham Dhyahatam Tam Duratyaya Mahatmyam Bhagavantam Idosmyaham Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Pleased with Gajendra's prayers, Lord Vishnu appeared on the back of Garuda. Lord Vishnu immediately cut the crocodile's head with his disc and pulled Gajendra out of the lake. One cannot win the battle of material existence with our own strengths. Only when we surrender to the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, He protects us and pulls us out of this ocean of misery. 